Comrades, I am Admiral Andre and welcome to Stable Orbit, an early access game that I think can make a very interesting, almost a mini-series on this channel. I won't be doing too many episodes because uh, due to the early access nature there's not really that much to do in the game yet, but nevertheless I very much like this kind of space-based game that does require a bit of strategic thought. Also another interesting reason, you can see, just make it out there, the flags of the participating members of this station, and of course South Africa is one of them, which is a very rare thing to see that in a game, and of course being South African myself, that uh, immediately got my attention. So this was one of my earlier attempts, I've actually not succeeded in making a... Uh, successful station yet uh, keep running into troubles but hopefully this time will be better if not it's still an interesting just you know an experience to share with you so let's go into a new station and create something so first thing we have to pick a name for our new station and i always like the name morning star station just because, you know, it, it's going to be very visible in the morning and in the evening, depending on where you are when the station passes uh, overhead, and of course the timing. But I have seen, for example, the ISS passing overhead just uh, around sunset, and then of course it looks very brilliant and very uh, obvious in the sky. So let's uh, launch this one and see, we have already done that, yes I've done that before in the test, but that's okay, I'll just say yes. And pause, pause immediately, there we go. So we've started and it is July the 6th in the year 2034 and the ISS no longer exists, it has exceeded its lifespan, so they've decommissioned it. But of course a new group of countries has stepped forth to create a new station and they are called the All Nations Space Coalition, so ANSSC. Uh, even in French, Coalition Spatiale de Tous les Pays, all the countries. And uh, the US of course is there, Canada as well, the European Union, so I guess that excludes the UK unless they came back into it at this point, which I doubt. The Russians, the Chinese, very interesting because of course they are excluded from the ISS for a host of political reasons, mainly in the USA, and that's why they're building the Tiangong station. So it looks like at this point we've started to overcome those problems and difficulties. Uh, Japan, of course, they run the Kibo and own the Kibo module in the ISS, so Good to see them here. Uh, I've now clicked on it, but it doesn't matter. Brazil is here. That's great. And of course, us and Australia. So you see all the bricks are there. Brazil, uh, India is not here, unfortunately. So the rest of them are Russia, China and Brazil and South Africa. So let's uh, have a look. So we start with the core module. So they've put this in orbit already. And being from one of the member countries, uh, I get to run the thing. So let's hope I don't run it into the ground, literally or figuratively. And uh, so we can host one person in the core module. Uh, I think it says it somewhere here. Yes, it is designed to house one crew member and is capable of storing food, oxygen and water. And we can see there 9 kiloliters, 50 liters and 64 meals. It also costs us, uh, what would that be, 2.4 million per day. I mean, it's 2,400 and another thousand after. So, quite expensive, but we start with 7.5 billion dollars. I assume this is US dollars since they are the one of the members there. And uh, of course we can do several things right now. So we've got these basic solar panels here already on the uh, core module. And that's giving us, it looks like, 11 kilowatts of power. It says plus 19 kilowatts there for some reason, but anyway. But we've got no batteries, so we can't store this. And when we get into the night, then of course the station essentially goes dead. So that's a big problem. Then the other thing that we have to watch out for is heat, so uh, of course that is a big problem during the day since there is no atmosphere to mitigate that. And waste, of course there is no one on the station yet, so waste is irrelevant at this point. 
Oxygen, water, food, we've seen that the core module does store that, but it doesn't show here because we're not using them at the moment, so essentially they are irrelevant for now. Crew, zero, we can of course host one, but there's nothing for them to do, and of course there's no way for them to get onto the station yet. And that's where we get these uh, expansions, the different modules and things that we can bring to the station. Now we don't actually see them build these things, but I assume it's sent up with, for example, a proton rocket. I don't know if a proton would even exist in 2034. Maybe the new Angara rocket or something. And uh, they bring it up and, of course, dock it here, and then that's how it gets built. Essentially, it's built on the ground, but we don't see that. So let's begin this, this thing here. We can just let it run now. We'll pass very slowly over the terrain, but it does seem like the sun is orbiting the Earth in this game, because we have so many day, day and night cycles here that uh, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, because... Of course, we should see night when we're on the other side of the planet, not on the same relative area. So, it indeed, the sun does or orbit the Earth for some reason. Oh well, I guess it's just to make it a bit faster paced, you know, because then there's many days, day-night cycles instead of just one every roughly, what is it, 90 minutes? So anyway, I think let's begin by putting one of the uh, nodes in the front, like the real ISS. I almost want to follow that as an example. Of course, we don't have the Zarya or the... Uh, what's the other one? Zvezda. We don't have those. Uh, it follows more of the... Uh, looks like the US and Japanese design and the Columbus module as well. They look a lot like these. So anyway, we'll put a node one in the front and then we'll put the uh, shuttle docking facility in the front of that. Of course, we don't have shuttles anymore, but it looks like they bring dragon capsules up every week. So at least that gives them a place to dock. Then on top of this, I think I would like to put a truss and uh, then we'll extend the solar panels out on either side, pretty much again like the ISS right now. We can of course do anything that we like, but uh, I think it's good to follow that pattern, at least for me, for now. So there we have night, but we're still over the same spot, more or less. Uh, so yes, uh, that's why I'm saying the sun does appear to orbit the Earth here. I'm sure they'll fix that at some point. Maybe it's just for balancing again. Anyway, so there the truss is now installed. They go very quick and they're generally cheap because uh, it's just a hundred million dollars. Of course, it's getting it here that's so expensive. So let's just build it out on either side. And I think a very good thing to build uh, also at this stage before we actually get any people is the oxygen... Uh, let's just have a look. Is it the oxygen production generator? Because this is a mistake that I made when I played the game, uh, you know, on my own. The dragon capsule there will dock and give us water and food every week. But they don't bring oxygen, which I'm a bit perplexed by. But anyway, so if we don't have an oxygen generator, the crew simply leaves. Because there's no way for them to uh, live here. And then the whole project collapses because we can't make any money if we don't have crew on the station. So let's put up the oxygen generator. It is a rather large module. And uh, I see we've got an antenna on this side, so I don't want to interfere with that. It costs us another billion dollars, but I think it is the most important thing we can do. Then also at the same time, I would like us to put the shuttle docking facility or the capsule docking facility on the front. And we can just let it run now. Nothing much else we can do while we wait for these things to be built or really brought up from the surface. And there it's day again. So the cycles go very, very fast. Anyway, I think we can add another section onto this truss. Uh, it just has to go active first. There we go. And truss. I just want to keep extending these. Two would be enough for now. Just to give us the room for the oxygen generator so I can extend the radiators down from the second one. 
then uh, we also need a lab so I'm gonna put this one where the Columbus module is on the real ISS if I just find small lab one and a half billion dollars and I guess these prices do make sense in fact they're a little cheap because the real ISS cost about a hundred billion dollars to build and uh, yes it does therefore seem like we're getting a good deal so there's the docking mechanism pretty much looking like the real thing I don't think they use it anymore because the uh, Soyuz uh, craft they dock to the Russian section so that's pretty much standing idle at the moment so we've got our oxygen generator now we need some panels that little panel will not be enough so I'm just gonna get us one panel but I will make it a medium one if I can it costs 900 million so we're running out of money but I've I've had this situation before where just two panels of the smaller variety are just not enough they just don't charge the batteries in in one day so I think now that we're doing that we can also add a battery just because we'll need it for the nighttime operation and then we also will need a radiator as soon as possible actually another 300 million so our budget is quickly evaporating there so how do you make money in this game? Well, it took me a little while to figure out this whole story, but once your crew arrives, and we'll just have one at the moment, you get various research missions or offers, essentially. Let me just pin this thing. There we go. So it comes into the inbox, and these are different companies like AEB and our own company, I think, the ANSC. Uh, and various others and they give us these different tasks like looking for example at the viability of closed ecological systems right now they're only offering us the basic level things because there's the dragon I think it's the dragon it does look like it anyway uh, they offer us these basic things because we'll only be getting a basic lab see it does look like that Oh well, so we'll get one crew member now, and it is James Lacroix. So I'm assuming that's a French person from the EU, obviously. So uh, they're most welcome. They're eating right now. So not much for them to do yet, because there's no uh, lab module. Anyway, so that's where they research these things then, and we get money on the completion of the contract. So for example, the neutron radiation will give us one and a half billion dollars, it will take a long while. Uh, you see the cheaper ones like the Biosphere research will take less time to complete. At least that's in my experience. But of course there's a lot of, you know, merit in researching these more expensive things. But we have to keep an eye on the deadline. So July 22nd. I don't know if that's when the offer expires or when we need to have finished the research. I think it's just when the offer expires. So there's nothing stopping us from just accepting everything. Anyway, where's the panel? We really need that panel. It does take a long time to be brought up, so I'll speed it up. There we go. So we've got uh, a big problem now with the power. The batteries are charged, but I think they'll run out quickly. We can have a look at the crew right now not doing anything so let's accept the biosphere one it should go fast and then we can still accept the neutron one as well so there's James Lacroix and uh, he is now sleeping so it of course varies depending you know on the time cycle that they decide to be placed on you can see their shift one so if we get another crew member they will go on shift two so it doesn't matter of course day or night that's not really relevant for operations on the station because it passes so quickly so let's have a look active means now he's researching in the uh, lab module so if we just go back to the research here and the accepted you see it's almost done so it's really quick to just look at this ecological system and that's a quick hundred million for us i wish it was it's that easy in real life so now uh, I don't want to let it stand idle let's pick another one when is that the first of August now we need to take the neutron one it will expire in 12 days and it's too much money to ignore the 
panel is still not installed and our batteries are running rather low. That is a big problem. 54%. I think it'll be okay though. If we had more crew and more modules, then we'd run into serious trouble. And of course we don't want the balance to run out, because I've made that mistake before. And if the money runs out, your station starts basically breaking up, because you just don't have the funds to support it anymore. And uh, that is of course a major, major problem. So let's just wait for this research to finish and once that's done we can purchase probably I think another node at the back here and then a habitation module that will allow us to bring two more crew up. I think we should also just look at the resources now. Okay, I'll just let it run on normal speed. We've got 2.7 weeks of food left which is fine because the dragon will visit every one week. Water is fine and oxygen, of course, we have to produce that here. They'll never bring it. Heat is fine, waste is still fine. Once that starts running full, then it will just basically mean that there's uh, time that the crew needs to take to clean that and basically just throw it out the airlock. But that's time they could be researching and, of course, making money. And there's, of course, other risks like... Uh, disease and so on. I've heard about that, but I haven't seen it yet. I've not been playing that long uh, on my own yet. I only got this game yesterday, to be honest. So, there we are. So, at least the power is now going to be very good. We'll fully charge the batteries before the night cycle, and uh, if we need, we can always get more storage capacity here, but I don't think that's an issue at the moment. We should probably look at water and food next, maybe even some more oxygen tanks. So what is uh, James doing right now? He's sleeping, so uh, it'll take a while before he can complete this. You see, it goes much slower than the other one. Let's just have a look. So we can buy some oxygen tanks. They are relatively inexpensive. We'll still have a billion dollars left. But the issue is where to place them. You see, they get offset like that. They don't get flat attached, uh, like the batteries, for example. But now, for me, where would we really put oxygen tanks? Wouldn't it be right attached to a module, not to the truss? Because then that would mean we'd need some piping to run from the tanks to the rest of the modules. We certainly wouldn't do that with food, because I can't see how you would get the food from the truss to the module. So there's some logical things I think that's a bit problematic. Let's just have a look. The food storage module can be there, but now how do you get the food in? So I don't want them to have to do a spacewalk just to eat. So yes, I think for the oxygen it's okay though, because I mean oxygen can go down a pipe for example. So let's just get some oxygen tanks installed, but now the other thing is let's just have to look at the spacing here. I think that would be fine though, although we could put it underneath there, but then we wouldn't have enough space to attach something to the module. Uh, could always put it back here. Mm, but then we couldn't put something on a node there. So that's the thing, we just have to really plan this thing out very carefully. I think let's just put it right there, above the oxygen generator. Power is fine, batteries are fine. Let's just have a look at the research and then I'll speed time up a little bit. You can see our money evaporating there because we're paying 300,000 per, I don't know, per day I'm guessing. Actually, it looks like per second right now, but anyway. So we're over Spain at the moment, and uh, what would that be? Barcelona, I think, and then the Mediterranean and the coast there. These are the Spanish, I think Ibiza is somewhere here. Then, yes, very nice views, of course, in this game, which you would need in a space game like this. Just wait for the research to go. It'll take a while. I see our water is running out, but the dragon should visit soon. The waste is still okay. It's just getting dumped out the window. 
essentially, out the airlock. And there's the capsule. James Lacroix is leaving due to critically low water. But there they just resupplied it. So why are you leaving? Oh well, I guess his time was just up. That's not totally logical, so I'd fix that. Uh, because obviously we were bringing water. But yeah, now the issue is we're having a station with no income and now we have to wait a week before we can get another crew member. Big problem. Oh well, I'll just speed it up until the next crew member arrives, then I'll continue the recording again. And there we go. That was very wasteful though. We lost quite a lot of money, but somebody should be arriving now. And we've got a one crew member, Maria Wu, so don't want to make any assumptions, but I guess uh, she's from China. But yes, yeah, so just because the water was delivered after, I don't know, it's very weird why they would just leave even though there's water in the capsule. Oh well, so one thing we have to get now is another water tank, otherwise this problem will just happen again. So where will we put that? We can again put that somewhere out on the truss. I mean, water can travel down a pipe, so that's not really a problem. Let's see, how much is a water tank? Quarter of a billion. Uh, how far are we with the research? Only about halfway. I think let's let the research continue first. In that whole week of waiting, we only reached the Indian Ocean, so we didn't uh, actually travel very far. But there's Sri Lanka and the Maldives should be beneath us now, yep. Well, Maria, let's do this research. Unfortunately, that now means the deadline for some other things would be passing, but I don't think there's anything else. It's just the agricultural camera right now. So once this is done, we'll get a huge sum of money and then we can get the water tanks. We're still fine for now. Crew is 100%. Let's see, batteries, fine. We can always get more, but right now we're not running out during the night. Measure the exposure of the space station to neutron and gamma radiation that come from solar flares, basic level. Australia is coming up now. Perth is lying right there, so we'll be almost passing over it. One thing I'm interested in is whether the orbits change over time, because they should. Shouldn't just pass over the same place the whole time. Almost done with the research. There's Perth. There's the capsule again. They should bring us water. And again, leaving the station due to critically low water supply, but there is now a full supply again. Yeah, this is a big problem now. I think they should try and fix this. Did we finish the research? Yes, we did. Okay, so we can get the station ready for the next crew to arrive. And I think for that we can actually add another node. That's quite expensive, but okay, we'll do that. And then, of course, we have to sort out the water now. I think we'll just put it again above the oxygen tank here. There we go. And of course, this can be upgraded again over time, so we don't have to keep building separate water tanks as we get crew. I think the other thing then is we should get a habitation module. Those are very expensive, though, but we should have enough money once the node arrives. Just want to leave us enough space to grow. Almost. So now everything is just dormant again. Why didn't Maria just take the water out of the capsule? Anyway, let's just put it back to normal speed. Our water tanks have arrived now, so we have 7.4 months of water, even though no one's using it at the moment. So at the back here, I think I would like to put the crew habitat module. Oh, it's one and a half billion. That's a big problem. That leaves us about 200 and something million till the next 
crew arrives. Uh, should we risk it? Let's risk it. Just so that we have more crew coming up with the next mission. Hopefully. Power is fine. There we go. So the this module uh, has expired. Oh well. There we lost the contract now due to the rather silly nature of the uh, water problem there. Anyway, look at the hab for a moment. And uh, basically that just... Uh, can house up to crew, two crew members so we can have three crew members on the station at one time at the moment outputs uh, it's not something to worry about it's just waste and uh, obviously they need power and so on so we should at some point get a waste processing or recycling unit but I think right now we just shouldn't spend any more money there's Adelaide and Melbourne and Tasmania Canberra is right there and I lived there for a few years so it's interesting to see it. Anyway I'll speed up again until the crew arrives so let's see how many we get now. And they're arriving. We just passed New Zealand there. We should get three I think. Two. Oh well two is just fine. I guess three would be too many at the moment. So, who do we get? Tina, one, two, and Anna West. So, impossible, of course, to see where they're from, but uh, it's not important. So, hopefully, these two ladies will be staying longer than the previous crew members. And the dragon is leaving. Okay, so we've got 3.7 months of water. The problem is now the food again. Oh, dear. So let's get that sorted out quickly. Actually, I should just pause for a moment because we're not doing anything. What would be easy money? I think the easiest thing right now would just be to do the agricultural camera. It expires on the 3rd of September, but it's with less than the second level of neutron radiation research. So I think it will take a bit faster. And right now we just need quick money. And uh, yes, then we should get some food. Otherwise, we're going to have the same problem and they'll just be leaving again. But if I do it now, then we will run out of money before we get the payout from this research. Actually, I'll just pin this again so we can see how quickly it progresses. And now it should go much faster because we have two crew members so they can rotate. You see shift one and shift two. So the one is researching while the other is sleeping. Although, of course, they do rest and eat and do other things as well. But this one you can see is really progressing fast. Just as soon as the money comes in we can get the food. Cosmic rays, the contract has expired. Ah, I don't like all that contracts expiring. Oh well. Hopefully now things will go smoother. We've got one week of food. Which means they probably will leave again as soon as the dragon docks again. There we go. Lab 1 is contaminated due to excess waste and needs to be cleaned. For some reason they store the waste in the lab and not in the hab module. Which is uh, again strange. But maybe they're doing some health research on it. But now basically they need to throw it out of the airlock. But it seems to take a rather long time. See another day is passing. Just open the airlock and throw it out. I know it's not the best for space debris and all that, but the lab needs to function. Did we finish it? Yes, we did. Okay, pause for a second. Right now, food is the highest possible priority, and I think we should put it on one of these sides here. Let's just see, where is it? Food storage module, because obviously you want to have access to your food. So that doesn't interfere with the antenna there. Quarter of a billion, that should go rather fast. It's not, uh, the more expensive ones cost longer to install. Anyway, pause again. There they finally vented some of the waste. We just need to pick more research. So the next one we could go for is the epigenetics in microorganisms. Although I do want to get the September 5 one. There's one that expires in the end of August. 
These new models, modules ones, they never expire and that's how we unlock new things, but that's not necessary right now. So let's get the radiation. It's the first one to expire and it pays a lot of money. So let's focus all our efforts on that. And the food should uh, be installed. There we go. And we have 2.3 months of food. So they actually bring the food with the module, which is good. Heat is a bit of an issue. We're almost maxing that out. So I think the next thing we should get is another. What's happening? Why is she sleep deprived? That sometimes happens when the batteries run out at night. Then the hab becomes uninhabitable. And then they say they're marooned. But then as soon as the power is restored, it should go back to normal. It should have already. Some things I still don't quite grasp. Why is she marooned? Now it's normal again. So it took quite a long time to repair there. Maybe we need to upgrade the batteries. It doesn't cost a lot of money. So 200 million. Everything is relative, of course. Just to make sure we don't run out of power and they decide to leave us. Hey, we got another crew member. It's the first time I've got three at one time. So Enrique Kowalski has joined us and hopefully there'll be enough things for them to do now. We still only have one lab. But that means this thing should be operating continuously. What shift is he on? Shift 3, that's fine. So they just divide the day into 8 hour segments, which is logical anyway. So let's see, active, active, active. Yes, they keep rotating it. So when the one takes a break, the other one takes over. So that's fantastic. I think we're pretty much maxing out right now the uh, efficiency of the lab, except when it comes to the waste now. So let's put a waste module, but uh, money is an issue. Uh, half a billion dollars for the waste recycler. So I'm afraid that we'll have to wait for the neutron thing to be finished. Let's accept the next research so long and that should be the 5th of September one because it expires first and it's worth the most. And let's just wait till they clean the waste out again. It takes several days. There we go. They finally threw it out the door. Almost done. There we go, two billion dollars again. So, as far as I know, that's the extent of the game at the moment. But still, you know, it's a bit of an interesting diversion. So let's put up the waste recycler. I think we can just do it right here off of the core. And then we still have one part left there. But I'm not going to put proper modules off of there. That's what I'll use the nodes for. Another thing we could do is then get another lab, possibly. Well, that's too, way too expensive now. I'm not going to risk that. So we'll just wait for the waste recycler to be installed. And what's our research looking like? It's contaminated again. Here we go. So that's installed and now it will go down over time. So they don't have to keep taking care of it manually. The heat is the next issue, but uh, I don't think it should run into a problem as long as we don't add another solar panel first. How much is a radiator? 300 million. We can afford that. So let's just be safe because if we have excess heat or too much heat, then we'll start taking damage. And that's very expensive to repair. Power is okay. Uh, it almost runs out actually every night. And this is now with the expansion. You can always add another one for 200 million. We can afford it. Okay, they're not researching anything right now. So let's just pause for a moment. What is going to expire first? Uh, I think we should do the agricultural camera first. Then we'll do th uh, the cosmic rays and then the epigenetics in microorganisms, the next one. Although it still looks like the first level, I guess the other one was cancelled when they left the station. And then we'll get the upgrade for the battery, since we can afford it, and I think it is rather important that we don't run out of power during the night. 
then everyone gets upset and leaves, leaves the hab and all of that. So we've maxed that one out. We can always add more battery packs if we need. Just close that and have a look at the... No new offers yet. That's fine. I think we'll leave this episode here now. We're passing... Where are we right now? Looks like the Yucatan. Pretty much where we passed over last time. Of course the orbits will not shift very fast. But this is more or less where we started over Florida. So very interesting. I might do one more episode of this. Uh, I don't know if there's too much more we can do. We can just add more lab modules and hab habitats and more resources and so on. But, uh, you know, early access, but very interesting nonetheless. And especially because South Africa is there. So I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a detour and uh, hope to see you next time. Have a fantastic day.